The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 4, or Chapter 20 of the whole series, The Foundling. This is another episode that's leaving me feeling very, very weird. Okay, just like last week, it's got me feeling in many different ways right now. And uh, let's just get into it. So the Mandalorian episode starts off basically right where we kind of left off with Bo-Katan and Din Djarin now with his creed on this this planet here. And they're still hanging out by the water where they got attacked for these creatures and stuff. It's like, why are you still there? I don't know, but you get to see a bunch of Mandalorians. They're training and whatnot. And we get to see Grogu sitting on the ground by the water. Don't know why you would let him sit by the water after what you experienced. Weird. Um, but either way, he's sitting there by the water, playing with the crabs or whatever they are. Uh, and then I see the first most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in this show so far. Um, we, we see Grogu fight against a child Mandalorian because he's going to become a Mandalorian now and he wins in a little like battle duo with like these darts on his wrist they give him darts and he uses the force to jump over the kid jump back and like shoot him with the like little blaster darts that they're using for practice and he wins the little duel with the the child Mandalorian and look I like the whole look of, you know, baby Yoda, baby Grogu, whatever. I think it's it could be cute and stuff. I know. I get it. It worked for that. It really, really works for that. And it works even when he's using the Force because the Force is a very mystical thing that doesn't really necessarily... It's just different. You know what I mean? Him using the Force isn't as weird as this. We've seen some movements from Grogu this season in particular that's just... It's so weird. Because they're continuing to use a this, this puppet, okay? Maybe it's because it's a puppet. Um, but I think it's also because, look, I know they say he's a 50-year-old child, obviously, because they you know, age very, very slowly. I don't really care. This is, a, this is a baby. This is a baby that is leaping around these child Mandalorians who seemingly seem just so much more developed already because they're obviously aging faster than Grogu is and he's leaping around and just with ease you know beating this child in this little training combat and this kid this this, this thing can't even speak a word yet and he looks like a dead dead weighted nothing puppet getting thrown around back and forth <laughs> it looks fine when he's sitting there and moving around a little bit but it looks really silly when he's just suddenly doing some crazy action scenes it it doesn't look good i don't know if it'll get better but i'm not liking how it's looking it looks very very silly um and we'll see where it goes but i mean it it's interesting to see him do these things i guess um i know it's the whole storyline of him becoming a mandalorian now because he went with mando and Din and I get it. That's what they're doing now, but it just looks silly to me. So enough on that. He, you know, he defeats the kid, and then after the kid, the kid he was fighting with, the training with, he gets taken by another creature on the same damn beach. Oh my god, dude! Uh, this is the part of the episode I didn't like. Okay, so the Mandalorians, they're still at the same damn place, and they're getting attacked by another damn big creature. And they have to go and fight it and get this Mandalorian kid back because he got taken away from it. It's like a big dinosaur dragon thing. Um, so that's basically the plot of the Mandalorians in the current timeline here. And I say current timeline because we're about to get a different scene. But that's it. They have to go track down this random child uh, that got taken away by another big creature at the same damn place. Okay, anyways. So Bo-Katan takes the lead because it's kind of what they teased off in the last episode where she's going to start taking charge. She's part of the Creed now and she wants to just really show off her skills and whatnot and she knows this big secret of the Mythosaur. So she kind of takes charge in finding the child, going to this thing's nest and just basically hunting it down and getting the kid back. That's it. So Grogu is left behind with the armorer while the whole team goes out to get the kid, uh, the foundling kid. So we get this weird, I don't even know why he's really necessarily reminiscing on his past at this moment, but he's sitting in the room with the armorer while she's like crafting this new piece of armor for him. And he's like remembering how he escaped the Jedi Temple. We finally get it. This is the part of the episode 
I do like. So, we got this scene in the actual trailer itself, very, very similar to what we saw in the Book of Boba Fett, actually. This is where, you know, the, the, the 501st clone troopers were coming through the doors, storming the Jedi Temple. These are, like, the same type of Jedi we saw in that flashback in Book of Boba, um, and it's fully fleshed out here. So, we're finally getting it. We're not really just holding back anymore, and I do like that. I like that we're not doing this stupid teasing thing anymore. We see who saves him, and I'm... I'm actually happy with it for many reasons, and uh, let's just get into it. So, we got some cool scenes. Grogu looking at the Battle Order 66 going on. Uh, we got some cool shots of the 501st Troopers, of course. Uh, Anakin's 501st clones storming the Jedi Temple. Super cool to see that. And there he is. So... We see the one who saves Grogu in the end. So it's really not just one guy. It is one guy at some point. But first, it's like multiple Jedi trying to save Grogu. It's like there's multiple Jedi making the big attempt to keep Grogu safe. Um, that's fine, I guess. But then it ends up being in the hands of this one Jedi that we've never seen before. But we have seen this actor before in Star Wars. And... Although I like Jar Jar Binks, I think Jar Jar Binks is pretty cool. A lot of people may disagree. Uh, definitely a controversial character of George Lucas's prequels. I think we can all agree that Ahmed Best definitely got treated terribly by a lot of people um, during the prequel trilogy, along with like Jake Lloyd and all of them uh, during the prequels. You know, lots of backlash to them. You know, in the Phantom Menace. You know, specifically, and there's. You know, Ahmed Best came out. I remember him coming out and telling his struggles with like the the aftermath of all the hatred and whatnot that he would get from the fan base and just how he would get clowned on. And I, I gotta believe it. Like it seems like he got he got hit pretty hard with this. So Ahmed Best is playing a new Jedi here, and I got no problem with it. I'm being honest. I got no issue with this. He's playing this brand new Jedi who's going to come in, save the day, and save Grogu. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I like seeing Ahmed Best being in this new character role. Again, I said I like Jar Jar Binks, and I hope we see Jar Jar again. I like Jar Jar. But I also think this is cool. I think this is a really cool thing for Ahmed Best, and I'm super happy this is happening for him. Um, and I also like that this is a new character. There's been theories all over the place that this is going to be some Jedi or character that we are very familiar with that is going to save Grogu and it's going to be very small universe like you know what I mean but ultimately it is Ahmed Best's new Jedi character and he gets to fight off some 501st clone troopers with his two lightsabers his green and blue lightsaber maybe he picked it up from another uh I think he actually he did pick up the ones he did pick up the one lightsaber actually in the elevator if I remember uh, while the elevator door opened with Grogu, and he is now the one to save Grogu in the end. So we get some cool shots of the Jedi Temple burning on fire during Order 66, and then we get a really, really cool uh, chase scene through Coruscant. Uh, lots of Coruscant in this season so far. I do like that. Um, him basically escaping the um, newly forming Empire from Emperor Palpatine himself. Uh, so he escapes and he gets away with Grogu. He, I, I honestly, I don't know where the story's going to go. I think we might explore it more of where they go and how he ends up in the hands of the Empire again and stuff like that. I think we'll get there. But basically, we get this quick little scene of him escaping, um, finding another ship, and zooming away in hyperspace and he has escaped the clone troopers for the time being so at that moment during order 66 it is Ahmed Best's new Jedi character that has saved Grogu and I think it's kind of cool I think it's all right I don't think it's anything too weird or strange or whatever I think it's kind of nice I, I like seeing Ahmed Best as a Jedi I think it's pretty cool uh so I did like the flashback portion of this episode I think it's definitely um, one of the highlights so far of season three of Mando and season three of Mando has been very strange. Okay. After this episode, I got to say it's been very all over the place, but I do like this, this whole sequence and it doesn't cut away or anything like that. Once we get into the sequence, it goes until it ends a uh, one shot sequence. I, I do like that. So, um, yeah, very nice to see. But then we go back. The armor has finished her armor piece for Grogu. It literally just looks like a big pin on his chest. It looks kind of silly, but it's like a Beskar circle armor plate on his chest. I mean, he's already got Beskar around his whole body. 
So, I mean, okay, sure. Let's give him some more stuff to put on him. I, I don't really know what the... I, I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I, it was a way to give us that flashback, I guess. I don't know. But we jump back to the Mando Mandalorians and Bo-Katan basically leading the group to go save this kid. Let's just cut it you know, pretty short here. She can take off her helmet when she eats. They all separate. Uh, they camp out for the night. During the day, they go back. They climb up this big mountain to go to the nest of this dragon creature, whatever. Here it is. It's very ugly. And another Star Wars creature causing chaos. Uh, just like in the Bad Batch, just like in this show, there's always some creature for them to fight. Uh, you got some cool Mandalorian action, I will say that. You got some cool Mandalorian action, just like that first episode. Uh, you get to see a bunch of Mandalorians fight and whatnot. I like that. But there's not much to this story, okay? They get the kid back. Bo-Katan is the hero of the episode. And I don't... That is another thing I don't like, Okay. This whole show so far has focused on Din Djarin and Grogu. And we're still seeing Grogu's storyline. But we wrapped up Din's story like two episodes ago. When are we going to pick it up again? I want to see Din Djarin's story. I like Bo-Katan. And I like the focus she's getting. I do like this character. But let's 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 catch back up with Din Djarin as well. He's just kind of hanging around now. And just not really doing a whole lot. Um, so I, I hope we do. I think we will hopefully um but i do like bo-katan as well and she tells the armorer while because she lost her little shoulder piece at the during the battle of the thing um she lost a little armor piece so she goes to the armorer to get a new one and she says this time i want to get a mythosaur symbol on my my shoulder piece instead of the night owl and she says i i want this because what if i told you i saw a real mythosaur and the armorer is like well that would be like mythical it's like a mythical creature she doesn't doesn't seem like she really believes it but at the same time she ends up just saying this is the way and i i don't i can't really tell how the armorer feels about it yet i don't think she believes bo katan yet and i think overall bo katan's mission here is what the theory has been now for the past week or two is that she is going to go back to this creature the mythosaur on mandalore and maybe try to take control of it or ride this thing who knows what she's going to do with it, but she is determined and fixated on the mythosaur now. And I think it's a really cool story. But again, this this show is Din Djarin's story with Grogu. Okay? It's called The Mandalorian, and I know it's not called Din Djarin, but The Mandalorian, it, it's, it's Din Djarin. Okay, this is his show. This is his show. This is Grogu's show. And I would love to get back to his story as well. I mean, he's the one with the dark saber and all that stuff. I, I would love to see his dynamic with this whole thing and hopefully we get that in the next episodes but that's where it ends that's basically where the episode ends so again we get two parts to this episode just like last week i liked the mandalorian stuff more last week less like more than the the coruscant pershing stuff this week i actually liked the flashback middle thing more than the mandalorian stuff the mandalorian stuff this episode was very very just I, I didn't need to see it. Um, it was a big mission of them just trying to rescue some random kid who is apparently Paz Vizsla's son um, from this new creature that they have to fight again because they won't leave this place. And it, it was really bland, but we did get that sequence like story here at the end with bo and the armorer. Uh, we do get little bits and pieces there for Bo's story. But overall, man, I didn't I didn't really need to see them go and spend the whole episode rescuing this random kid from some random creature that we'll never see again. Um, but the whole Grogu thing, uh, the flashback and everything, I'm glad we told that story. And I'm very happy for Ahmed Best. Um, I'm sure he's very happy to just have this new character. And that is the benefit of having a character that was like a CG alien creature is he can be another character in Star Wars if he wishes. We've seen that with... Um, Andy Serkis, and he played a character in Andor, and we all know he was in the sequel trilogy. So, I mean, with that, you know, with the CG characters, you can come back and play a new character. And now he's got two characters in Star Wars, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I got nothing against um, Ahmed Best, and I think he was pretty good in the scenes. I'm, I'm, I hope to see more of his character, and I'm, I don't even know if we know his name yet, but um, I'm curious to see where that story goes. I think we're going to see more. Um, it was a good episode. It wasn't great, but I did like the flashback the most, and I'm glad that story was just flat out told instead of teased. I'm glad it's just we, we see who saved him now, and it's we see how it happened. 
Um, and then we're obviously continuing Bo's story. So that's it for The Mandalorian. Very short episode, um, but we're halfway through the season now, and it needs to pick up because it's kind of been scattered everywhere right now, and I don't know how to feel about this season so far. There has been some really good moments, though. It's some very, just very questionable story points in this season so far. Um, so on to week five, on to episode five, and hopefully we just go full force into the story and it makes sense. That's all I can really hope for.